Hello and welcome back to Let Jill Talk, or if you're brand new, welcome. Still need to work on an intro, to be honest, to be frank with you. Hope everything's going well in your life, and as always, I hope you enjoy. Today I want to talk about Scott Buck. Now, Scott Buck has been in the news recently, if you're a Marvel fan, or more specifically a fan of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, you kind of know already that Scott Buck isn't exactly the most likable person in Marvel right now, because, like, I guess, uh, how do I put this, um, nicely? He sucks. Now, I don't mean he sucks as a person, I just mean he sucks at handling a Marvel property. As many of you know already, he was the showrunner for the first season of Marvel's Iron Fist, and of course he's the showrunner for last night's, well, at the time of this recording, last night's premiere of Marvel's Inhuman. And let's just say, yeah, both of those shows have been very negatively received, I'm going to be honest with you, and I know already that you're supposed to hold judgment for any type of finished product until you see it for yourself. And I did. I decided not to record this video ahead of time. Decided to wait till Inhumans was, you know, aired because I didn't attend the IMAX premiere, which I'll talk to in a second. And, um, I watched it last night. Or well, I'm recording this on the Saturday after the premiere, and... Let's just say... It was really, really uninteresting and boring. Um... The budgeting looks very horrible, um... The actors didn't really do a great job, per se. The action was kind of... mediocre. I just didn't enjoy it. It didn't resonate with me. It didn't click with me for some reason. Because you expect this, that they have a formula by now, but in reality, they didn't really have that with Inhumans. And then the same thing with Iron Fist. I didn't... I had to force myself to finish Iron Fist. And I did as well with Inhumans. In fact... After the first 10 minutes, I started snapping with my friends how bad this show was. And it, I didn't really see a good thing about it. Even Lockjaw, who's supposed to be the comedic relief slash adorable character that everyone's supposed to love. I couldn't even really get into him. And that was really prominent. But this isn't me reviewing Iron Fist or Inhumans. I'm just talking about why Scott Buck isn't just... At this point, let's just say, after two misses with two Marvel properties... I feel like, personally, it's time for him to go. Let's just say about 95% of Marvel Cinematic Universe fans, or majority of Mar Marvel fans in general, would agree with me. Scott Buck just basically needs to pack up his bags and leave. I, it really feels, I really feel sorry for saying that. I, I believe, yeah, everyone deserves a second chance, but let's be honest. He did two Marvel TV seasons. Iron Fist Season 1, which... After going out Daredevil, Jessica Jones, and Luke Cage, many fans assume Iron Fist is going to be another home run, Scott Buck's going to deliver a great piece, and then um, last year around this time they announced, oh, he's also going to do the new Inhuman show. I'm like, okay, great, if they can get a, if they think Iron Fist is great, then Inhuman should be great, right? Then Iron Fist Season 1 came out back this March, and then everything changed sadly. It showed that, yeah, Netflix can't always deliver great Marvel quality, and... You know, a lot of people just felt like it wasn't that great. I mean, sure, there was, there's always those percentage that does like the product, and it did like Iron Fist, but it didn't, wasn't as great as Daredevil or Jessica Jones or Luke Cage, and it, it really felt bad for them. Thankfully, the character's been redeemed in um, The Defenders last August. Um, that's the silver lining there, but the problem with Inhumans is that there was just no fame. As soon as that first trailer came out, as soon as we saw the characters, the cat, they just... It looked really cheap, and and if you know already, Inhumans was a collaborative partnership between Marvel Television, ABC Studios, and IMAX. IMAX landed out their camera and funded the first two episodes of the show that ABC wouldn't so that they'll have more money for the last six episodes. But even the first two episodes felt very cheap. Like, where was the money going? They had two, they had some of the greatest cameras out there right now. And they didn't even, they didn't even use it correctly. I mean, I can tell. I watched it on my regular HD TV. I didn't bother seeing the IMAX 3D, and I could tell. Like, yeah, this wouldn't have. This would. This was a waste of IMAX's time. To be honest with you, I mean, granted, I, I believe IMAX should have just stayed out. I, I know Marvel was on a, on a on a string of success, so they felt that like the Inhumans, like a partnership, would be great. And it just didn't work out. To be honest with you. Um, I really feel sorry for them, and back to my point. Scott Buck, I don't know, for some reason, he doesn't know how to resonate. If you watched my 
my, the first episode of Let Your Talk, I talked about how creators need to be passionate about the project. They need to get everyone, everyone correctly cast. They need to have great scripts. And this was just an example where things go wrong. Now, the thing is, from what I heard, is that here's in the case. Whenever I, I, I listen to interviews or read interviews with the creators, with the people that are directing or show running these shows, they're very passionate about the characters. I, I, I beat a dead horse about this, and I really do. Uh, Drew Goddard was really passionate about Daredevil. Um, the the um, the woman who's behind Jessica Jones, she tried to make Jessica Jones for years before the Netflix show ever happened. She pitched it as an ABC show back in 2010 or 2011, and she really kept going. And Chio Baker, who made... Um, who, who was the showrunner for Luke Cage, he was very passionate as well. For Scott Buck, I didn't really hear anything, to be honest. I didn't really hear him, like, really um, caring about Iron Fist or Inhuman. I'm sure he does, but his direction wasn't really the way we needed it to be. Now, of course, I heard a lot of controversy when Iron Fist came out, when the actor Finn Jones was cast as Danny Rand. Like, oh my god, they're whitewashing again. Now, to their credibility... Danny Rennie was always white. At least from what I can tell. I mean, the name sounds white enough. He does look like a white guy. So, and I know he's infused with Chinese mythology, but that doesn't exactly mean you have to have a Chinese actor for him. That's one of the one cases, okay? There's any, every, everything else, okay, I support that. But in this case, you gotta have some leeway here. And now, with humans, um, I believe the way he cast those characters weren't... I mean, granted, they... Try to get some Game of Thrones stuff by um, casting E. Well, I, I'm really horrible at actor, actors' names, but you know who I'm talking about. They cast the guy who plays Maximus just to get that Game of Thrones vibe in there. And he's, I think, the best actor of them all, but he doesn't really exactly inspire confidence as the rest of the cast. The character, the, the actor who plays Black Bolt, you know, he's not supposed to speak, and he's trying to speak through his um, sign language. Um, or whatever they're gonna, they call that in the MCU. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's Sidewinder, but I'm pretty sure the Inhumans have their own specific language for that. I don't really know. And the rest of the characters were really kind of bland. They really were generic, two-dimensional characters that didn't really have like much feeling, to be honest with you. I mean, I just really had the power for this two-hour two premiere. And back to my point on the um, why Scott Buck wasn't such a good fit is that I think he tried too many things. Like, he didn't really resonate with the character. I think he just wanted to do what he felt was right, but sometimes that isn't now really the case. I really believe Jeff Loeb and the people involved in Marvel TV should have really been more careful, because the problem with Iron Fist, it was at the very back burner. It was the show leading up to Defenders, and I guess they really wanted to pound that out quickly, and I guess they didn't really have time. I'm hopefully that the new showrunner for Iron Fist Season 2, Raven, again, I'm really forgetting the last name on this, um, I hope that would be the right fit that Iron Fist Season 2 needs to be better, because Defenders really brought Iron Fist back to a decent and bold state to be redeemed for Season 2. And I'm hopefully that, that's going to be a good season. Hopefully. We'll, we'll, we'll see when we get there in 2019. Um, the straw that broke the camel's back. Because now no one's happy. ABC, I'm pretty sure, does not want to renew it for Season 2. Scott Buck is optimistic for Season 2, but I'm like... You're going to go down in ratings. I'm pretty sure the people who watched the first episode was generally, hopefully, going to see an Avengers Infinity War trailer, which sadly did not. But it's not going to get a season two. I'm pretty much guaranteed. Unless it's like a big boost in the ratings, I highly doubt it's going to get a season two. And I'm pretty sure this is the end of Scott Buck's career, but no, not the career, more like his time in Marvel. And I think he should just quietly announce that he had a great time working at Marvel, but he wants to go in a different direction. Well, we obviously know why he got kicked out, or... He's going to get kicked out. I highly doubt Marvel TV is going to hire him for anything back. Because the reason for for Iron Fist Season 2 was like, oh, he's busy doing Inhumans. I'm like, that implies you're doing a second season of Inhumans. Which I highly doubt, I really highly doubt that Disney is going to stick its neck up like they did with Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. for Season 5 than they're going to do for Inhuman Season 2. At least it, that, that's at least in my juncture. Um, but I do believe that these characters can still be redeemed if they go over to Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. or if we get some type of other TV show with their mentioning of them or having them come back for another show. But I don't see Inhumans, the show, being redeemed because the ratings, because you got to think of like a TV corp, they need to make money off the show. And since the IMAX stuff didn't really get generate what they wanted and the ratings, I'm definitely sure the next six weeks, it's definitely going to go down in the toilet. Um, 
I just don't see it. I really, I really hope they bring the Inhumans for Age of the Shield, and hopefully, on the Netflix side, they do redeem Iron Fist enough. But yeah, Scott Buck needs to go. He is just not the right fit for the MCU. He is the perfect example for someone who just doesn't belong in the MCU. It, you would assume that Marvel, at this point, has had a formula for picking the right people. But this is just one of those cases, even the best things in the world has its um its failed spots, and this was it. And I really feel sorry. I really was um, excited for Iron Fist. George was a major fan of Iron Fist. That's the second favorite character, apparently, or third. Kirk may have wrong, George. But, yeah, he was really hot for Iron Fist, and he was kind of a little bit bummed out that um the reviews weren't great for Iron Fist, and, of course, everyone just gave up on hu Inhumans after everything that happened with the marketing. And, yeah, it just really it goes to show, like, I repeated this before, but they're just directors and creators that just aren't a good fit for the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and maybe there's just those types of people who were just there for the money. Um, I don't know Scott Buck personally. I don't know his stance on Marvel. I know he was, I'm pretty sure he has a pretty decent relationship, but at this juncture, he hasn't delivered quality products to them. Iron Fist and Inhumans were definitely not up to quality with the rest of the Marvel TV Universe. So I think it's best at this time period that Scott Buck just announces that he's not going to do anything more with Marvel. Um... Because I, I know they're going to probably come up with some PR excuse saying that, oh, he wants to move on to other projects or he just has no more interest. Even though we all know the truth, yeah, no one likes his products and he's going to pretty much just leave or get kicked out, whatever, whatever's going to happen. But yeah, so again, yeah, it sucks. I really, I, it does really suck when a, when, a, when a product sadly sucks or isn't up to snuff like everyone else is. It's just a, it's a big disappointment and it's a waste of time in the end, but it's a learning experience. You learn from it. I'm pretty sure Netflix and ABC are going to learn that they're going to really have to be a little bit more attentive to the people they're going to be hiring to handle these new properties because there's a lot of Marvel shows coming out now and I'm really hoping they all aren't the Iron Fist or Inhumans debacle. I'm really hoping, I, I hope they learn their lesson. So yeah, all we can do is hope now and good luck to Scott Buck and hopefully... Um, he makes the right choice and just doesn't come back. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Anyway, guys, thank you guys so much for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't. If you like this video, let me know. Um, well, like, just click the thumbs up if you like it. And if you have any recommendations for me, we're still I'm still improving this. Um, let me know in the comments below. And otherwise, guys, I'll see you guys next week.